Praise the Lord. Today you are so quiet. What's up? Is it cold? Yes. Yeah, I think it's cold. Yeah, I don't know whether to do a Bible study this morning or to teach or to preach. <laughs> I don't know which one. Um, there's a project I'm doing up country, a small project, and I've done it to the point of roofing. And um, the contractor tells me I can roof using steel. Uh, or I can use wood. But it's preferable that I use steel. Uh, I'm sure you're asking me, what's the, what, what's the story? Um, I have two brothers back home who are helping me in this work. Uh, one of them is uh, deals with timber. <coughs> and because he, deal, he deals with timber, he keeps calling me and asking me, oh, let's do this, let's do this. I cut some, some cypress trees. We can uh, do this and this and that. And I, I think even yesterday he was calling me and I didn't answer his phone. <laughs> And um, I have another brother, again, the older one, who I've been instructed to, to confirm with me the cost of using steel. So I sent him the other day to, to a hardware shop to find out the, pri the prices. And when he called me, I answered. And we discussed and we made some good progress. Now let's read the scripture that we are studying this morning. It's in 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5. You found it? Verse 14. And it says, and this is the confidence. I want to talk about confidence today. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Second verse. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that he asked of him. Amen. Now you can understand my story. Yes. <laughs> it's my will to do that building with steel. And that's why when my brother and the other brother calls me and asks me about it, I respond. I answer him and I talk with him and we make progress. Amen. But when the younger one asks, calls me, I don't answer because <laughs> it's against my will. <laughs> I don't want to move with wood, I want to use steel. So today I want us to study this and find out what does it mean. This is a confidence that we have. Confidence is so important. In Hebrews it says, let's come boldly to the throne of grace. We need to be bold before our Father. Amen? It's so important that we are bold that we are confident when we come before him. Confidence means we are assured, we are supported, we are accepted, it is well. This is a confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. If I was to make a phone call to you, using my phone. There are three things I need. Number one, I need to have the phone. Is not that correct? A mobile phone. Secondly, it must have a SIM card. If there is no SIM card, no, no connection. And then thirdly, the phone must be on. If I see you, it can't make a phone call. 
Amen? Amen. Now it's so important that we connect with God. And the way to connect with God is when we ask, or say we ask Him, according to His will. Amen? Amen? So it's important for us to know His will so that we ask according to His will. There are two stories I'm going to illustrate to you uh, this morning from the Bible so that you can see what happened. Amen? Amen. Number one, the story of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. It's a very interesting story where Elijah was the only prophet in Israel against over 400 prophets of Baal. And one day Elijah told the king, let's organize, let's have the people come. Let's have the prophets come. Let's have a gathering. And this is what we will do. We'll set up two altars and two bulls. And then he arranged that the first group, which is the, the prophets of Baal, will bring, will, will bring their bull, cut it, put it on the altar, and call upon their gods, Baal, to bring fire and burn the sacrifice. It's a very interesting story. Very interesting. Because that's what happened. So they set it up in the morning, and then Elijah told them, now go ahead, call, call, call upon your gods. Let your gods answer and bring fire. Whichever, whoever God brings fire is the true God. And, I'm, and, and in the story, the prophets called the whole morning. Until midday, they were, they were calling and nothing was happening. They began to cut themselves. In fact, in the, another version, Elijah is telling them, cool, cool, maybe he's gone for a walk. Maybe he's gone for a journey. Ah, maybe he's in the toilet. That's what it says in the version. And nothing happened. Up until three o'clock in the afternoon, the evening uh, sacrifice, nothing happened. So Elijah says, okay, it's now my turn. And when it was this time, the first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord. Then he put the, uh, the, the bull, which was cut on the altar. Then he asked them to bring water. He was, he was trying to make it like impossible to have a fire on a wet sacrifice. So they poured water on the, on the bulls, on the bull. Then he says pour again and again the third time. And even over the trench until it was flowing. Then Elijah just called and said, Lord, I'm doing this according to your word. And immediately the fire came and burned the offering. Completely licked the water and everything else. Now what's the key there? According to your word. See? Elijah was confident. That's why he was able to pour water. He knew fire would come because God had promised him. So he did it according to God's word. That's the power of knowing God's word, knowing God's will, and praying according to his will. And this is a confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's so important. We need to come before God with confidence that when we ask anything, we know deep in our hearts that this is God's will. And when we know this is God's will, we are sure we make a there's a connection. You see, if you buy pick a phone and begin to call, I must make a connection with the other person. Is that true? true? And if I make that connection, then I'm assured that I passed my message to the other person. 
The only challenge is, is the other person willing to do what I've asked him to do? And in Corinthians, uh, Romans chapter 8, it says, if God could not spare his own son, but freely gave him up for us, how can he not with that also give us all things? In other words, God is willing to bless us. Amen. God is willing to give us things. He's not mean. He's generous. Amen? Amen. But he only responds to his will. Amen? Amen? He responds to his will. That's so important. That's why Jesus says that will be done on earth as it's being done in heaven. It's God's will that always prevails that pleases him. But many times when we come in prayer, we just pray. We don't care whether it's God's will or not. And that's why sometimes we end up praying for long hours and pleading with God and, and doing many things. When it is God's will, you don't have to plead. What did Elijah do? He just came and said, Lord, at your word, I've done this. Let the fire come. And the fire yeah. came. Compare with the, bar, the, the prophets of Baal, who shouted and cut themselves the whole day. Hello. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I pray, my prayer that this will change our prayer life. That will change the way we approach prayer. That we begin to become confident. In fact, in, in the book of Daniel, it says, those who know their Lord, their God, will do what? Do exploits. Why do they do exploits? Because they know his will. And because they know his will, they flow with the will. They ask according to the will. They do God's will. There's power in knowing God's will. And how do you know it? Romans 12 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. There are not three wills, one will which is perfect, acceptable, and good. Amen? Amen. So as we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, we begin to know God's will, almost naturally. Because of his word. Amen? Amen? And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he has us, what happens? We have the petitions. We have what we've asked. We've received it. That's why in, in, in Mark 11, I think verse 23 says, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. That only works if it is God's will. No struggle. I have another example to tell you this morning. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we have a very interesting story. It's the story of David and Goliath. And you know the story, I don't have to illustrate you all know from Sunday school. But the thing is this, David stood before Goliath, who was mighty. All the other Israelites, all the other soldiers were scared of Goliath because he, he, this guy was tall and huge. And David was just a young boy. And uh, they, they told Goliath, you come before me with your spear and your javelin and all that, but me, I come before you in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I come before you in the name of the Lord. And when they brought, um, they, they dressed up David so that you could fight Goliath, David tried and said, I haven't proved this. I don't think I can use this. Uh, attire, and he refused. You know, many times some of us, we find ourselves doing things 
that are not necessarily God's will. Or we are using our own carnal and human abilities. But here David learned a lesson that he was coming before Goliath in the name of the Lord. And because he came in the name of the Lord, what happened? He overcame and killed Goliath. Amen? Amen. So, when, when, when we say we come in the name of the Lord, it's like when we pray. We say we pray in the name of Jesus. When you say in the name of Jesus, it means according to his will. Amen? Amen? We pray according to his will. This is God's will. And when you do that, you are confident. First of all, you are assured of that connection between yourself and God. Secondly, if that connection is made, it means then the prayer is answered. So once again, brethren, this is a confidence that we have in Him. That we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Amen? So let's, let, let's dig deeply and find out what is God's will. And many of God's people don't have time to study the Word. We become lazy. We pray the normal usual prayers. And we hope like we hope God will hear. We hope it will be answered. And so we are not confident. Our prayers become a tradition. In fact, there's a scripture which says, you have made the word of God of no effect by your traditions. There's a story of a lady who, whenever she would fry her fish, she would cut half before frying it. So after, after many generations of repeated uh, tradition, one day someone asked and said, why do you cut your fish up? by half, and they said, well, that's what we've always done. But the truth is this, the first person who ever did it, did it because the fish was too large and the pan was small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they cut it half to fit the, the pan. But it became a tradition. So people just do it without thinking why. And even for us, we can do the same thing in our prayer life. There are some prayers we say, and there's no reason why we say it. It's just a tradition. And tradition is so powerful. Culture, tradition, is so powerful, it can overrun faith. Yeah, so it makes the word of God of none effect. Tradition can make the word of God of none effect. Think about some tradition you have that has made the word of God none effect. Can you think of one? There are so many traditions. So many traditions. Even the way we pray. We just pray without thinking. And we end it in the name of Jesus. And we think by so saying, it means it's God, in God's will. But it's not necessarily so. Our prayers have become a tradition. We don't even expect God to answer our prayers. We don't. For some of us, we pray out of fear. Because if we don't pray before sleeping, something bad can happen. So we pray. But we are not really connecting with God. Let's make our prayers effective. Let's be confident when we come before God. Let's be able to write a journal and say, I, I prayed, I asked God for this, and this is what he did. It becomes our testimony, lively testimony. Provision, healing, deliverance, and all other things, including directions, can be provided when we come before God in faith in confidence because we are praying according to his will. Amen? Amen. 
We are praying according to his will. We are not chancing. We are not hoping. We are confident. Because first of all, God is generous and he has freely given us all things. Actually, God has already done it. He has blessed us with every blessing in the heavenly places. We are already blessed. It's ours. But many times that blessing must now be manifested through faith. It's amazing. There's a scripture I read, I think, in Romans again. By the Romans is a powerful uh, book, chapter 8 in particular. It talks about uh, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. That's God's will. God decides to lead us, to lead his children. So as many as are led by the Spirit, they are sons of God. To be spiritually minded, that same chapter says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be kind of reminded is death. The same chapter says, if the Spirit of God, which raised up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, dwell in your bodies, the same Spirit will bring life, will quicken your mortal bodies. So the same Spirit that we have in, our, in us, the Holy Spirit, can actually make our bodies alive. It can quicken our mortal bodies. It can bring healing from within. That's God's will. Amen? So you can come before God and say, Lord, you say that the Spirit of God that dwells in me can quicken my mortal body. So I thank you for it. I believe it. I receive it. I thank you for it. And it becomes a reality. The other opposite is to plead and say, Oh, God, heal me. Oh, God, do this. And yet God is saying, But I've done it. All you have to do is receive and believe it. <coughs> there are so many things God has done for us. Many things. But we ask Him, yet we have it. The board is on our side. Amen? Amen. You let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You allow the word there is let the word of God allow the word of God dwell in you richly. But sometimes we don't allow. We allow other things to control us. So this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Isn't it wonderful to be heard of God? It's really wonderful. I know, I know my younger brother really keeps calling me, and he keeps calling me. But because of his own self-interest, his own plans, he doesn't care about my will. He doesn't care. So the same thing with God. If we ask anything according to his will, we get his attention. We get the attention of God when we call upon him according to his will. Because at the end of the day, he desires that his purposes be fulfilled in every human being. Because God created us in his image according to his purpose. And there's a purpose for each one of us. We need to identify what that, part, that purpose is. That is God's will. Amen? Once you know what, what that purpose is, it will come to pass. You don't struggle. So once we find ourselves struggling in life, we wonder why have we struggled? Why are we struggling? Many times we struggle because we have not known God's will for our lives. Sometimes we are in the wrong career. Hello? Yes. yes. We find ourselves doing the wrong things and stressed with life. Yet there is God's perfect will for you. The question is, why do you look for it? Once you identify God's will for your life, God's purpose for your life, let me tell you, you flow with favor. You flow with favor. And it's amazing when you get to know that. 
But before you do that, you can struggle in life. And you think you've been cast? You think God doesn't care for you? You start thinking many things, but let me tell you, God loves you dearly. And there's nothing you can do to earn God's blessings or to earn God's love. He has freely given you all things. Hallelujah. Amen. I have my own example. When I was growing up, I grew up in a non-Christian family. Everybody else in the home was not a Christian except myself. It was tough. But I just looked to God. Called upon the God of Israel. And when I look back at what he has done in my life, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I mean, I, I was the first child to, to go to university in my village. <laughs> and, um, and God just blessed my, my, my life. He blessed my work and, 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 and ordered my steps. And, and when I joined the company where I worked for, it was called Kenya Post and Telecom Corporation. I look back and I'm amazed at how God blessed the work of my hands. In 12 years, I was able to, to, to grow in the career from a, 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 a basic engineer to a, a high level, you know, assistant general manager. And by the time I, I finished my 12 years, well, that's when I joined full-time ministry as a, as a pastor. The people who trained me, who are my bosses, I was now their boss. It was really kind of funny. <laughs> but it's because God gave me so much favor. Amen. I didn't struggle at all. I, 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 I found myself sometimes getting promotions, jumping some grades. Amen. That's what you call favor. Amen. And that's when you are in God's will. Amen. Amen? Amen? When you're in God's will. But if you try and do something else, because that's what people do, you find you struggle. And I find many children, or many parents, failing their children, because they force them to do careers that they themselves prefer. They feel like you have to be a doctor, you have to be an engineer, you have to be this. No! There's always a purpose for every child. I remember when our last one child was born, uh, just say, God gave me a vision. Just the same day, I saw him holding a guitar. And I knew this man is destined for music. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank God because he has grown up and that's what he has done. Amen. And he is excelling. He's doing so well. He plays the music very well. He's also a teacher. So at, at the age of 21, he's already teaching other students music. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just amazed. But that's because he, he is in his purpose. Amen. When you flow in your purpose, there is no struggle. Amen. Yeah, there is no struggle. Your career and, and your life becomes just favor, full of favor Amen. all the time. But if you try to do something else, you find you struggle. So this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. Do you think it's God's will for you to be healed? Yes. Then ask according to his will. And you'll be? You'll be healed. Do you think it's God's will for you to be blessed? Yes. Yes. Ask according to his will. And when you come before him, come with confidence, with boldness. You don't plead with God, by the way. You don't plead with God. You thank Him. Amen? There's no need to plead. How do you plead for something He has given you already? You say, Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you that by your stripes I was healed. I thank you that I have the blessings of Abraham. Imagine Abraham. God called him out of his family. He called him out of his family. And by faith, he left his family to follow God, to do God's will. 
And because he followed God or did God's will, what happened? Abraham was blessed. Amen? Amen. At some point he was tempted to, to try and succeed in a carnal way by having Ishmael. But God told him, no, 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 no. Out of your, your you will get your own son from Sarah. See, many times also for us, we, we lose patience and we want to accomplish, we want to help God. We want to help God by doing things in our own way. But let me tell you this, so there's perfect, good, and acceptable will of God. If we are patient and seek his face, we'll find it. And Abraham waited for many years, but one eventually they got their son of promise. Isaac. God's promises to us are yea and amen. Amen? So this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, what happens? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have the petitions that we will ask of him. And we can enjoy our walk with God. Let me tell you, God loves us so much. God has freely given us all things to enjoy. We need to find out what those things are. What is God's will in our life? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word, that this is a confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. Lord, you've taught us today to seek your face to seek your will, to seek to know what it is that is well pleasing to you. And that when we pray, we ask according to your will. We bless you, Father, that you have freely given us all things in Christ Jesus. We thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.